The magic of the desert is when you pass through it, you see nothing and you think it is wasteland. Then you suddenly see little things that you can not think possible. They're particularly looking for uranium at the moment. The guys are trying to determine the, the actual size of the resource to sort of delineate where any mine should be, if there should be a mine. We're just looking for the bedrock. Uh, the deposit here should be above the bedrock. Mining is a very negative impact on the entire environment here in the desert. Geologists find it easy to identify places where there are minerals because it's not covered by thick layers of sand and vegetation. It's easy to exploit. Labour costs are relatively minor in the mining sector. So they could afford to have reasonable wages. And so it became fairly attractive from that perspective to get a job in mining. But we saw also now with hindsight what the costs were for workers, particularly in terms of health and particularly in the uranium sector. I was a technician in laboratory. I started working in 1976. They didn't tell us uranium was dangerous. From 80s, I've had an anemia. In 2000, Dr. Pretorius told me, no, you are exposed by a low-dose radiation. Workers died of cancer on a, on a significant scale, where they said they are quite convinced it's related to their work environment. And then the companies hired their own doctors to say they must now assess. Workers distrusted those doctors on the company payroll so much that they rather spent their own money to have an independent assessment. It is my medical report that I got from two uh, doctors. The report is saying that my uranium was too high. This one is now my history of the laboratory, how unsafe it was. A lot of the, the guys who was working with me died already. Namib has had mining all along. The country gets a lot of resources, uh, finances through it. There's a lot of work opportunity. But you can't sacrifice a conservation area for a mineral in that conservation area. I put in a motivation that if they want to mine an area and say it is 10,000 hectares, then they have to compensate the park with 10,000 hectares adjoining the park. The mining taking place here is basically all open pit, which they find in this environment as cheap. Desert land they see as worthless, so you can just apply for a huge mining area. Now the problem is two ministries, the Ministry of Mines and Energy and the Ministry of Environment and Tourism are not amalgamated and there's very little cooperation between them. You see, if somebody wants to prospect an area, he goes to Mines and Energy. Conservation doesn't have a say in it. In the Ministry of Mines and Energy, they are not conservation-minded. They are miners at heart, exploiters of natural resources. They just uh, allowed mining to take place, and now we have vast tracts of 
so-called conservation area which is being dug up and ruined. In Namibia, we, we need work. At the moment, there is no work. That is, that is the problem we have. For many workers, they're easily replaceable, so companies use them. You don't like it here, use the door. We have thousands of others that will apply for your job. It's not that the mines offer such wonderful conditions. It's a lack of alternatives. In 2018, we're talking now, before the COVID crisis, our unemployment was already 34%. Even when workers know the risks, even if they would not ordinarily want to work there, the economic circumstances are so dire that they have to. Uranium price has decreased to such an extent that it is not viable to open a new mine in a desert environment where you need to lay on power, water, housing, roads, everything. Up until about 10 years ago, uranium was mined in Namibia and sold to world markets. And as several countries exited nuclear power over the years, the demand dropped, world market prices declined. In Namibia now, we're facing a scenario where uranium is almost exclusively supplied to China. The supply chain is not dependent on world market prices anymore. If it's one state-owned, company that mines and supplies another state-owned company in China to run uh, nuclear power reactors, then that doesn't matter. It's not to say it's all bad because it's the Chinese per se. It was not great before either. But what is the point now is to learn from that history, to limit the exposure to workers, but also the the environmental destruction. And there comes a point at which the negative effects of such uranium mining might outweigh the positive ones, then we can't just continue on the same path. There's mines everywhere. Uh, it's, it's, it's frightening. I mean, we have the moon landscape. That entire area is under mining license but they haven't actually developed the mine because the price is too low. It's sub-economical at the moment. But if the price goes up, we can say goodbye to the Nama Park. We're so grateful that they create a few jobs. So we'll take the health risk, we'll take the environmental destruction. That kind of colonial pattern needs to be broken. A uranium company must know when you come to Namibia, there are no shortcuts. You must protect workers and you must protect the environment and there are measures in place to provide for at least some rehabilitation afterwards. With people's health, you can't rehabilitate once the damage is done. So there, it must be preventative from the outset. So I say, look, this will be extremely tightly monitored. We bring in expertise from wherever it is needed to ensure that workers get the greatest protection possible. But we also play open cards that it's not absolutely safe if it isn't. And, and Rissing has done that with the union over the years. There's kind of the steady safety drill every morning. So the, the kind of standard procedures to be involved. That's all fine, but that doesn't deal with the monumental problem of radiation and its exposure. And there you had that some scientists said it's far worse than what Dressing and other companies say. And I think that history we mustn't repeat. It's a very difficult uh, problem to solve. I mean, if you close any mine, there's hundreds of jobs on the line, you know. Now you need mining, but 
the population of Namibia should become more conservation orientated. In the long run, we depend on nature entirely. And we owe it to the future generations to not sacrifice what nature has given us. Because it's not poverty that is driving it, it's, it's greed. For, for Namibia, you have to be very strategic in what you want to get out of the sector, and at what cost, uh, and what are the benefits of allowing it to continue. Um, also involving workers and their unions, and then decide strategically which mining activities are still beneficial, short and long term, and which ones should simply not be allowed to continue or phased out. And at the moment, unfortunately, because of this mass unemployment, the power is tilted very much in favor of the mining companies, and workers would be horrified if they're told the mine closes, the income is gone, then what in a country that has so few other jobs? And I think this is the, the dilemma that we face today.